how pistons work. There's a lot of engineering that goes into pistons and there's design in cylinders that I'm going to show you now. The most common kind of piston like this lawnmower engine piston and like in most cars is just the flat top piston. Here's a two stroke flat top piston. The difference is it's got two rings and four stroke pistons have three rings. And this one's the oil wiping ring that keeps the engine from burning too much oil and it wipes the cylinder wall and sends the excess oil back through holes behind the ring. And if you look closely when I move this, there's drain away holes in there behind this ring that allow the oil to run back inside the piston and go back into the crankcase. This is called the recessed piston and it also has pre-made valve clearance into it. This valve clearance may not be necessary for the engine that it's in but some engines are designed so that you can put a higher lift camshaft in them which opens the valves more and this just makes it so you don't have to take the engine all apart change the pistons you can just change the camshaft and your piston will still not interfere and hit your valves. These kind of pistons are generally used on turbo engines because they lower the compression ratio. This one's four stroke also. I don't have enough old pistons laying around here to show you every type so I made a drawing of the other types. Next is a very common one on snowmobiles and dirt bikes. It's called the dome top. It's got two rings as it's for a two stroke. They're very strong because two strokes run at high RPMs often have very high crown temperatures. The top of the piston is called the crown and the dome makes them stronger and also two strokes don't have any valves in the head so they very often have a hemispherical head which is a great design to propagate a shock wave to push a piston down so you make a better piston, one with a dome to fit in that space. Also there's the four stroke diesel with a nucleation point and direct injection. So the side view of the piston would look like this. There'd be probably three or four compression rings and one oil scraper ring. If you cut the piston in half down this way, the top of the piston, the crown of the piston would look like this. It would have the undercuts because many diesels have a flat cylinder head with no relief for the compression ratio. And this little prick that points up in the middle of the piston, the same height as the top, and the direct injector would sit right above it. And this gives a little point that runs a little bit hotter than the rest of the piston. It also just gives something like the dirt on the edge of a champagne glass, a point where the flame would like to start and propagate, where the explosion would begin, a nucleation point. If you're modifying your four-stroke car engine, you know, usually V8s, and you have the older style and you have a typical cylinder head that's not designed for high compression but you don't want to buy expensive cylinder heads and you want higher compression in your engine well then you can get the wedge or raised top piston this is common in small block Chevys or with large combustion chambers and it's just got a raised bump on the top on one side this side's lowered to make clearance for the valves when they're opening and that increases your compression ratio on two stroke engines when you want low RPM torque and good fuel economy like in small motorboat engines that are two-stroke. This is called the scavenging piston. It has a wedge shape on it with a curve here and a gentle slope here. This is the exhaust side. and This slope is designed so the exhaust can shoot out very easily and that the intake has to like shoot up above it and allow the exhaust to come out uninterfered and not mixing the two gases together. One more thing I forgot to mention is that many modern two-stroke high revving dirt bikes actually only have one compression ring. A boat engine would actually have two. Now all pistons have rings and on most two-stroke engines they have a little tiny dowel pin like you can see right there and then a little groove in each side of the ring to line up the ring when you're reassembling them. Always make sure when you're working on a two-stroke that when you're trying to put the piston back into the cylinder that you have the gap of the rings where the dowel pin is or you'll destroy the rings and even just push in that dowel pin and trying to squeeze them and get them into a cylinder if you don't have them lined up. On four stroke engines the rings can just spin around and go any place they want but actually when the engine's all assembled and even though it's running and moving all that time the rings usually stay in pretty much the same place so they don't need those dowel pins. The reason why two strokes have dowel pins is because they have ports inside their cylinder walls, like you can see there, 
to let the exhaust gases out and the intake gases in and you don't want the ring opening up and expanding and getting the corner of it caught in one of those ports and snapping the ring off. Four strokes always have smooth cylinders all the way down, no holes because they breathe through their exhaust and intake valves. Now you do want to line up the gaps on the rings on a four stroke engine in a certain way. For example, this piston went in the engine this way and when the crank was turning on its downstroke for its power stroke and the crank had the rod pushed that way, so the crank was turning in this direction as the piston was going down, then this side would be called the thrust side, this side of the cylinder. The engine was rotating that way. Well, you don't want your ring gap on the thrust side because it's pushing harder on that side and the little corners might gouge the cylinder wall a bit. So when you install the rings, you install one, say, at that position and one at that position and the oil ring, say, at another position over here. You never want to have all three ring, you never want to have all three ring grooves all in line because that would cause a compression loss. When reinstalling new rings or putting the same rings back on the piston, one might have what looks like here a chrome band around the outside edge. If you're not sure if only one ring has a chrome band and the other one doesn't, the chrome band one always goes on the top. If one ring looks like it's just all dark cast iron and the other rings look shiny, the dark cast iron one will generally go in the middle. There's two very common designs of oil scraper rings. This is the three-piece model. This is the one-piece model. This has two raised high points with thin edges to scrape oil and purge it back into those holes. There you can see the little holes, the drain away holes. This design is not as good. They seem to burn more oil when the engine gets higher miles on them because they wear out quicker. The three-piece design oil ring is much better for long life and less oil burning. It has this corrugated part which you install first. Then it has two very thin chrome rings. You install one at the top, one at the bottom, and they sit in two little grooves, and the corrugated part is actually acts like a spring. It helps keep those oil rings spread apart. They last a very long time and have low oil consumption. Whenever you put new or used different rings in a cylinder hole that didn't come from that engine, the very first thing you do before you put them on the piston is just squeeze them, each one, put them in the cylinder, then take the piston with no rings on it and shove them down part way. It's best to shove them close near the bottom on a worn cylinder where the cylinder is narrower at the bottom because there's less wear. You'll notice I've got this one just shoved down far enough for demonstration purposes so that I can still film it, but you'll see the tiny little gap. The gap should only be between four thousandths to ten thousandths of an inch wide, most often around four to five thousandths, which is like the thickness of two pieces of paper. If you have no gap in your ring when it's in the cylinder, well then when the engine heats up to operating temperature, the ring's going to buckle as it tries to expand because there's no gap for the expansion to move into. And the buckling will cause cylinder gouges, like scoring, and that'll damage your engine permanently. If there's too much gap, you lose compression, and generally you can see that your rings are worn out and they're not even thickness all the way around, and this certainly means it's time to change your rings.